Hello folks, just before we kick into part three, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's already donated to the railway, whether it be via text or the website. You really are wonderful people and it has been really, really helpful. If you haven't donated already and would like to consider doing so, then please visit watercrestline.co.uk forward slash support or to donate £10 via text, text watercrest to 70085. Now, where were we? Ah yes, if you missed the last episode, essentially we rebuilt the line. Part 3. Now the railway had completely relayed the track from Allsford to Alton, the next task was procuring enough locomotives to cope with demand when the current fleet was being overhauled. Over the next few years, through talks with owners and locomotive societies, a number of agreements were signed for locomotives to move to the railway, including 9F92212, Ivert Tank 41312, and A4 60019 Bitten. All four locomotives would be overhauled by the railway, and many of them would then be run on the line for the duration of their 10-year boiler certificate. The railway also managed to secure the purchase of Black 5 No. 45379, which arrived at the railway in ex barry scrapyard condition and was lovingly restored back to working order by the staff and volunteers. As the locomotives arrived at the railway, the lengthy restoration and overhaul process began. Now the railway also had a mainline connection. The railway purchased a set of coaches with one aim in mind, mainline charters. Run by daylight rail tours, the train was given the affectionate nickname the Green Train and the first trip left the line on September 13, 1997, taking the train to Bath via Guildford and Reading. The Watercress Line became the first heritage railway to run rail tours using our own stock and mostly our own locomotives, with Standard 5 number 73096 hauling most of the trains. The rail tours proved to be very popular and successful for a number of years, but in 2005 the Green Train was sold to help raise money for restoration projects. In 2001, the restoration of the good shed at Allsford was completed transforming a run-down shed with a loading dock into a shop and event space. A landmark for the railway, being its first successful grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund. But it certainly would not be the last. 2003 also saw an unusual visitor to the line, in the form of Southwest Train's newest train while being tested. The Class 450, though usually powered by third rail, had a Class 47 diesel at the rear providing the electrical power. The testing process was to see how the new units behaved with train detection systems that could be found across the network. These could also be found on heritage lines, which is why the units came to the Watercrest line. The tests themselves had to be carried out away from the national network, just in case the units inadvertently began affecting the signalling systems. 2005 saw part of the embankment at Butts Junction removed to make way for a new housing development under the condition that the income obtained from the sale would be reinvested in the railway. The loss of the embankment wasn't a huge loss to the railway itself since realistically there was very little chance of reviving the Basingstoke and Alton Light Railway. 2006 saw the railway see a great achievement and sadly an unfortunate failure. The failure occurred on July 25th when a train derailed as it approached Ropley due to a set of points being moved under the train. The train was travelling at low speed and thankfully no one was injured. After an investigation by the Rail Accident Investigation Board, they made a number of recommendations aimed at the signalling system. The railway took these recommendations on board and upgraded the signalling systems to include the most advanced interlocking features which can now be found in all boxes. The end of the year provided a great success for the railway, as it secured a grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund to construct a wheel drop at Ropley, to allow for wheels to be removed from rolling stock without the need to lift the whole unit and hire in a crane. 
This was completed just a year later, in December 2006. May 2007 saw Bitten return to Steam after a full restoration, which had previously been unsuccessful at other locations due to requiring the front third of a chassis to be cut off and replaced, not something anyone had ever done before in preservation. The Loco hauled her first train during the 2007 End of Southern Steam Gala, and ran on the line for a short period before leaving to continue her mainline career. She visited the line on several occasions, before returning for her last year of service in 2015. During her mainline career, Bitten hauled the Airball Streak out of London's King's Cross Station at 8.21am on Saturday the 29th of June 2013. The start of an historic high-speed 90 mile an hour plus run up the East Coast Main Line from London to York, paying homage to Mallard's 126 miles an hour world steam speed record, set in July 1938, which still stands today. A recorded top speed of 92.8 miles an hour was announced on board the trip, although some registered the run as touching a top speed of 93 miles an hour. Bitten is now stored, awaiting overhaul at crew. Bitten wasn't the only high-profile locomotive to have been based at the railway. In 2009, with agreement from the National Rail Museum and the Eastleigh Railway Preservation Society, Lord Nelson was relocated to the Midhance Railway so the railway could assist in getting it back into running order. The locomotive ran at the railway until its boiler ticket expired in 2016 and was a firm favourite with many of the crews. Lord Nelson is currently awaiting overhaul, but hopefully it won't be too long before work will be able to start. The railway was looking to expand their capabilities and in March 2008 submitted an application to the Heritage Lottery Fund for a grant towards the construction of new workshops at Ropley, two apprentices, an education officer and an interpretation officer who would help develop the storytelling role the railway has. This grant was approved just a few months later, with part of a contribution from a railway coming from the funds generated from the sale of the land at Butt Junction. The new workshops were completed and opened by Pete Waterman in February 2010. Split into two sections, one end was dedicated to carriage restoration and building. The other end was for working on boilers, which allowed the railway to undertake more boiler work in-house thanks to these new facilities. The workshops also included viewing galleries, to allow the general public to experience the work that goes on into restoring and maintaining boilers and carriages. Later that year, thanks to a grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund, more apprentices were taken on for a two-year apprenticeship including a number destined for the carriage works and boiler shop. With the addition of these new facilities, the Watercrest line had well and truly started to evolve. It really is amazing to see what you can achieve in a few years. Not many railways can boast that they hosted their own mainline charter company using their own locomotives and rolling stock. Quite a boast indeed. And with some brand new sheds being built, the railway really is starting to evolve. Now if you'd like to help support the railway during this difficult time then please visit watercrestline.co.uk forward slash support or to donate £10 via text, text watercrest to 70085. Now a couple of you may know what happens next but I ask you to keep it to yourself for now. If you don't know the story about what happens next, then tune in next week where the railway will see one of the worst setbacks it's seen in preservation. I'll see you next time. <laughs>